gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to meet with you at this audience. And it's a great pleasure for me to have been provided the opportunity uh, to introduce the lecture again in inscrutable Japanese. How they behaved in and after the great earthquake by the very famous and renowned anthropologist Professor Takeo Funabiki. Our speaker, Mr. Professor Naviti, has a distinguished academic career in the field of anthropology. He specializes in the research of the factors which created character and spirit of Japanese people. And today he is expecting to talk about the behavior of Japanese people during and after the last year's great national disaster, earthquake and tsunami. 
And as you understand, where well, today's lecture is a special one because this is one of the uh, events marking the 20th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries, Japan and Azerbaijan, and which is celebrated this year. So I hope that it will provide Azerbaijan audience with a valuable opportunity for a better understanding of Japan about what is the nation, our nation, the way if people think and behave, which in turn will make a great contribution to the further enhancement of mutual understanding and the strength and reinforce the friendship between the two countries. <laughs> Yes. So uh, now I'm going to give the floor to Professor Thank you. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to give lecture here. Um, today I'm talking of rather dangerous topic. Uh, dangerous because not not because uh, it was on tsunami and earthquake, but uh, I'm talking of religion. When I learned English, uh, my American teacher she told me that you shouldn't talk of politics and religion when you are at the table on the di at the dinner, and you should avoid talking of. Uh, religion, politics, and if someone starts to talk of uh, religion or politics, you should break in and start to talk of sex. So, in US, talking of sex is less dangerous than talking of religion and politics. Um, I'm not sure if it's true here or not, but um, still religion is very uh, sensitive, easy. Um, at the end, I think I would say that the Japanese people are not religious. But they are not just religious, but they are spiritual. The difference is very intricate and difficult. Okay, let's start. I think you uh, given the draft of my lecture. Uh, some parts I will skip, and some parts were um, not just right, so I changed and I transformed. But. Um, most of them is what I would now read. I'm an anthropologist who specializes in the Pacific and East Asian regions. Um, as for research on Japan, I conducted a few surveys in rural areas for my talk on Japan today. I have come to appreciate the Japanese classical arts, uh, no kabuki, bunrakura, over the past half century, first as an amateur and sometimes as a researcher. In addition, I've been paying close attention to Japanese society and culture, and in particular to the series of works known as Nihon Jinro, that discuss characteristics of Japan or the Japanese people. 
Um, in 2011, Japan experienced a large-scale disaster from an earthquake and a tsunami in the Tohoku region. Even when they were interested in economic development and the traditional culture from abroad at the end of World War II, nothing has attracted as much attention to the current state of modern society. It's a bit ironic. However, along with news of the disaster, there was also interest in the Japanese and Japanese society in the reporting on what conduct was taken by the people at the time of the catastrophe and by the Japanese government, local authorities, and NPO type of private organizations. Of main interest was the cool and collective orderly behavior and whittled the moment at the, the time the disaster struck and the tenacious perseverance and the quiet, non-violent, strong determination of the subsequent reconstruction. I myself, as a Japanese person, while feeling proud, thought there was too much praise and I felt a little bit woke up. However, there were distinct attributes of modern Japan and the Japanese, and if I dare say, um, good qualities as well. In this lecture, with these features of the Japanese people, seeing the time of the disaster in mind, I would like to give a historical explanation of how tolerance and secularity came about in the religions found in Japan. Such is the nature of religion in Japan that I believe it is very distinctive in the world. Focusing on the modern era, I would like to outline two remarkable points that have arisen from this tolerance and the secularity. One, the importance of the values of collectives like family and community. Two, inventions and methods that make people happier in this present secular world. In addition, I'd like to consider why the Japanese people behave the way they did during the disaster, and for a more frank exchange, I would like to answer your questions after my talk. The Japanese tolerance and secularity of religion. It is interesting that Japanese society's tolerance of religion can be viewed as actually beginning from intolerance. More specifically, it is paradoxical and indeed fascinating that the tolerance of modern Japanese Wherever they appear to have neither attachment nor opposition to any particular religion, has its roots in the ferocious intolerance of the Tokugawa shogunate religious policies. Tokugawa shogunate is uh, between seven, the beginning of, from the beginning of the 17th century to 1868. Today, I would like to look at how religious tolerance began and it has become and Japan's unique perspective on inventions and the ways of uh, making people happier, that has emerged as a result. So I changed some part of my draft. First, is it in fact correct to view the Japanese as tolerant toward religion? Japanese people certainly seem to take that attitude. For example, observing the religious conflicts that break out in the Arab world, for instance, and elsewhere, and how many people fight and die for religious reasons, ordinary Japanese people say that they cannot understand that intensity or implacability. Japanese people think that nothing will be solved if people insist on regarding their own religions and goals as absolute, and wonder why these people can't see their own ways of thinking as relative and respect each other's religions. This would, for example, prevent the futile deaths of suicide bombers and cut through chains of misfortune, they suggest. It sounds a little bit superficial, does it? And bystanders do. So, here, whether it is meaningful or not to solve the problem doesn't matter. I only describe ordinary Japanese people's feeling 
own religion. In relation to themselves, they point to the way in which Japanese people visit a Shinto shrine when a child is born, go to a Christian church to be married, and when they die, and they are buried in the Buddhist way. As evidence of Japanese religious tolerance. Japanese people regard the way in which they borrow the best points from Shinto, Buddhism, and Christianity for each of the key milestones in their lives as wisdom born from Japanese religious tolerance. Well, it is controversial, but still, I continue. I believe that these attitudes and phenomena seen amongst the Japanese people can be considered as religious tolerance and secularity, at least at the surface. However, until very recently, the Japanese were also prepared to give their lives for the sake of the country, as seen in the kamikaze course in the final days of World War II. And the well reported 1995 sarin gas attacks by the Aum Syndicate cult group also showed that religious groups that legitimize their even mass murder for the sake of their beliefs can still exist in Japanese society. How can we reconcile Japanese religion tolerance and secularity on the one hand with such cases on the other? To assist our understanding, let us first take a historical look at the changes that have occurred in the attitude of the people of the Japanese archipelago toward religion. For that purpose, I will use religion here in the broad sense of the word, embracing equally Japanese Buddhism and Shintoism, as well as Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and Hinduism, and all other beliefs that people think of as religion. Okay, I skip four lines. History of religion in Japan through to the 17th century. So my today's lecture, at least the first half, is just like a classroom lecture. It might be boring, but uh, forgive me. But after that, uh, it is a bit more exciting and interesting. But please uh, endure the first part of my classroom lecture. Let me begin with the evolution of those three major currents. Shinto, Shinto is a Japanese um, traditional beliefs on nature. Buddhism and Christianity in Japan up to the mid 17th century or the early Edo period. When the broad outlines of religion due to the subsequent development in Japan are certified. Shinto has a strong flavor of animism. Compared to Buddhism and Christianity, Shinto has no basic sacred text that needs to be learned, nor does it have the kind of consuming theology seen in other religions. It has no clear principles that must be observed, and no clear vision of the next world. Attendant to these qualities, gods are conversely innumerable and continue to increase the number, even today. For example, the shrine consecrated to the spirit of Meiji Emperor, who fought against Russia in 1904, is one of the most famous shrines in Japan, while in the vicinity of this Meiji shrine, there were also shrines for two soldiers who served the Meiji Emperor during the Russo-Japanese War. Various shrines, large and small, are scattered to the farthest corners of Japan, and the festivals frequently take place at shrines. Shrines with their apparently weak doctrines and systems have an established place in Japanese society. At New Year's Day, at least, millions or Perhaps tens of millions of people go off to visit the shrine. Nearly more than, more than half of population, Japanese population go to the shrine on the January the 1st to shrine. 
Rather than a religion, Shinto would therefore probably be more accurately described as a set of religious practices or a religious attitude. But it goes beyond the bounds of lifestyle, social rules, and other elements of material life, daily life. In the small communities that comprise Japanese villages, Japanese people could be said to use this weak Shinto system and more specifically Shinto shrines and festivals to underpin their sense of cohesion and cultivate an inner spirituality. To judge whether as a basis for that sense of cohesion and spirituality, Shinto has a transcendence, the otherworldliness, essential to a religion, more nuance is required. Transcendence or transcendental ideology is uh, keywords of my lecture. Okay. It would be wrong to say that Shinto lacks transcendence. However, compared to the world's major religions, that quality of transcendence is weak in Shintoism. Why is Shinto rather ritualistic than religious? Why has Shinto not attempted to bolster itself up with transcendence in the manner of other religions? These questions relate to Japan's religious tolerance and secularity, and the resulting unique Japanese efforts in the secular life, the focus of today's lecture. Okay, next paragraph I just skipped. Now I talk on Buddhism. Buddhism was brought to Japan in the 6th century by Chinese monks, and Japanese monks stayed up studying abroad with the various introduced sects competing for power. However, during the Kamakura period from 1185 to 1333, Japanese monks created a number of unique Japanese Buddhist sects in order to reform Buddhism, developing new Buddhist philosophy. These new philosophies, born out of these Buddhist struggles, were groundbreaking indeed, including the assertion that from the vast, really vast Buddhist canon, new radical monks said it was just sufficient, for example, to simplify, chant, the, into the sixth character oral invocation, Namu Amidabhas. So all other vast amount of uh, Buddhist canon is not necessary to read. These new forms of Buddhism shape the philosophical framework of Japanese Buddhism and the Japanese people even today. But in the mid 16th century, the Japanese religious world, as shaped by Shinto and Buddhism, experienced a major shake-up with the advent of Christianity. Christianity differed significantly from the other foreign religions which had previously arrived in Japan on the two following points. Firstly, Christianity argued that religious authorities superseded secular authorities. In Europe, this issue of status in relation to secular authorities was fought out between the religious world and the political world with relative dominance constantly changing. However, at least as far as Christian missionaries were concerned, the superiority of the church over secular authorities was embedded in the foundation of the church's existence and needed to be applied equally to the Japanese political situation. In fact, in the missionary activities in Japan during warring states in 16th century could not have taken place without the protection granted by rival warlords. So it was uh, um, involved in politics. Nevertheless, missionaries sought to secure the same kind of spiritual superiority over, over secular authorities that religious authorities enjoyed in Europe. In other words, even where the latter did not have that superiority, the missionaries retained an unshakable belief that they should. In fact, this is incompatible with uh, samurai lord ideas. 
Okay, I skip next paragraph too. Then the gradual shift from Torah to expulsion in the political policy on Christianity of the three figures, three samurai laws, quite famous in Japan. Uh, I don't think it's fair. They are famous here. But, uh, who successfully held sway in the 16th century, Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Ieyasu, was due to the fear of the dogma rejecting their secular or, in other words, political authority. At the same time, however, it was also because they, those samurai lords, discerned the political and military power of the West that at that time lay behind the church. In fact, without the ferocious suppression and the prohibition of Christianity that began in the 16th century and was completed by the mid 17th century, as well as associated isolation of Japan from the world for nearly 300 years, or at least a number of Japanese port cities, uh, sorry, isolation from the world, Japan, or at least a number of Japanese port cities, could well have ended up as Western colonies. What is most certain, however, is the major impact of these religious policies of the Tokugawa regime on the internal religious view of the Japanese people, namely secularization of religions. The Tokugawa regime pursued political control of the religion, religious world, domination of the public through religion systemized in this manner, and the concomitant secularization of religion. The control and supervision of domestic Buddhism and Shinto by magistrates of temples and shrines appointed by the Tokugawa shogunate was rigorous, with no space left for the kind of armed resistance which Ikoshu or Jodo Shinshu, some Japanese sect did stage against Nobunaga in the 16th century. So, not only Christianity, but also Buddhism was completely suppressed, was in control under Tokugawa government. This was the political control of the religious world, which I identified earlier. At the same time, instigation of the Shomon Inbets Aratami Cho, that means religious affiliation investigation resistance, which served to prove that people weren't Christians. So at that time, all the Japanese people are asked to the office, to come to the office on the 1st of January. They asked to stomp on the relief of figures, Jesus Christ or Virgin Mary, to demonstrate that they were not Christians. Even today, when Japanese are asked what their religion is, they will generally give the name of a Buddhist sect, which was given in Edo period, saying something like that. Um, I think my family belongs to so-and-so sect, and then he or she may add that, oh, it really doesn't matter except at funerals. That's quite an ordinary answer. This reveals that the Tokugawa shogunate religious policy all those centuries ago, whereby everyone had to belong to one Buddhist sect, created a social affiliation on a par with today's family register in world office, rather than religious devotion. And moreover, that this affiliation has continued from hundreds of years ago through to the present day. This is domination of the public through systemized religion. This system did promise the various Buddhist texts a certain degree of stability during the whole end period. However, the same stability also meant stagnation. Extending from 
Kukai and the Saicho, the two giants of Heian Buddhism in the 8th and 9th century, through to the radical philosophers Shinran and Nichiren of Kamakura Buddhism, that's the 13th, uh, 12th and 13th century. The intellectual lineage created by Buddhism in Japan tapered off or disappeared entirely in the Edo period. Surprisingly, the only Edo Buddhist monk who remains in the memory of most Japanese people is uh, Mr. Ryokan, a kind artistic monk who wrote a lot of uh, waka poetry and calligraphy. In other words, Buddhism, like Shinto, ceased to generate new ideas or provide a spiritual direction for new situations and instead became the executive organs for custom, performing the funerals, anniversary services, and the regular annual events that make, that mark people's lives. So it means that it is not religious, but just ritualistic. While the world views of Buddhism and Shinto continued to govern people's lives, emotions and aesthetic sensibilities, they did not seek to boost spirituality to the different dimension of the next world, but were rather a type of earthly pacifier or tranquilizer. Religion in this form could be regarded as well suited to inward oriented in the period of Japan, at that time, Japan was closed against other nations. Only Dutch and uh, Chinese and uh, Korea came to Japan for more than 200 years. Christianity and also Buddhism was, as a major religion has a potential to inform relationships with the world outside Japan, such as the Korean Peninsula and China. However, this possibility was cut off and religious organization and the doctrines closed inward. Within Japan, the power of religion was brought under control of secular authorities, namely the shogunate. I call the way in which religion abandoned its traditional supra-secular aspect and was incorporated within secular authorities, weakening its transcendental nature to function strongly as a spiritual lubricant for actual life. That is the secularization of religion in Japan. I have spoken a lot about Buddhism, but Shinto, an indigenous religion that fused with Buddhism to produce syncretism, also took hold amongst people as a very much similar kind of secular phenomenon. phenomenon. With secularization of religion during the Edo period in mind, just what was brought to Japanese society and culture? This would be two. One, the importance of the values of family and community. And two, inventions and methods that make people happier in the present actual our life. When a devastating incident, such as the great earthquake, occurs in the physical infrastructure and the governmental institutions and the like, which are present on the surface of society are literally washed away, these two concepts, notions, emerge as a basis of Japanese society. I will explain the, these two points. First, the importance of the values of family and community. The Edo period lasted some 270 years. The year 1638 saw the end of political and military resistance from the last of the Christians and the beginning of a 230-year peaceful period free from war and insurrection inside Japan. A large portion of modern Japanese society's human relations and the sense of values are thought to have been formed or, or been influenced by this period, more than 200 years of stability. Firstly, in society overall, the year household 
was a small student. Household family, year household unit, the smallest one. Then with tens to hundreds of households forming a Mura community. Then all of which comprised a feudal domain, which was governed by one daimyo or samurai lord. So household, year household, Mura community, and feudal domain. Household, I think, comprises uh, five or six or ten family members. And Mura community comprises um, 200 or 300 households. And uh, a feudal domain is compro composed of roughly 50,000 to 100,000 people. There were intermediary administrative units between the communities and feudal domains, but in terms of population, more than 80% of the population was agricultural and, in, and incorporated. They are incorporated in the very simple and strict organization of household community feudal domain systems. Although different in composition, even in urban areas, people lived in the same kind of strict strictly fixed social structure. There were severe limitations on freedom of movement. The use of wheeled vehicles and horses was partly restricted. Even in urban areas, people were absolutely required to return to their houses after dark. All of this stemmed from the Tokugawa shogunate's aim to create a lasting stable society where everyone, everyone had a place and no one was left out. In the household, there was a head of the family whose power was strong, around which the household was organized. Even in the community, influential farmers were consolidated under the guidance of the feudal domain. There were a number of shrines and temples in communities, each carrying out religious festivals several times a year. Festivals were carried out in certain areas of the community with everyone gladly participating in the preparation. Feudal domains promoted festivals which encouraged the unity of households and communities. They did not encouraged religious devotion, but they only encouraged to carry out the festival activities. Feudal domains promoted, I repeat, festivals which encouraged the unity of households and communities. The mountainous Japanese islands have the economically disadvantageous condition of having to maintain most of the population of, on narrow areas of land. While the lifestyle couldn't be called lavish, festivals and the traditional arts were undertaken with uh, ritual surplus labor. These traditions remain throughout the entire country after modernization and are even more prosperous along with economic development after modernization. This kind of situation is quite different in Japan from Korea Peninsula or from Chinese continent. In order to achieve this top to bottom rigorous administrative organization, the Tokugawa shogunate had extreme political power and at the same time suppressed the power of religion, which was strongly significant. After suppressing religious power, the festivals or rituals were ceremony, songs, dances, and food and drinks are that were encouraged by the shogunate and the feudal domains can be thought to have less of a religious aspect and were more strongly secular and societal in nature. 
This social system of the end period, minutely carried out to the detail, was extraordinarily superior at fulfilling a minimal function of society by not producing social dropouts and death from starvation in those same households and communities. With regard to minimal survival, welfare could be called through. It brought forth good circulation of, uh, for stability, a, sta a sustained society, and in turn encouraged the endeavors and efforts of the people. However, when viewed through our eyes, our contemporary eyes, we have to acknowledge that there is another dimension at play, namely a society that helps and cares for one another. That is the one that can be called a protective society, can also be called one that watches over one another. I mentioned the word soft totalitarianism. That is that. That is it. From the start of modernization in the mid 19th century, so the population, mainly young people, seeking freedom and new non agricultural work opportunities, started to move from rural to urban areas. They pursued they look for freedom to escape the oppressiveness of this mutual surveillance. But, if so, can we say that modern Japan has emerged from modernization that the societal order of household, community, feudal domain has disappeared and that even if there are remnants of it in agricultural communities, they are not seen in urban areas? I do not think so. And I think that this is just a characteristic of Japanese society. Even in modern age, this household, community, um, feudal domain type of uh, district <laughs> cohesion exists even now. For example, although a small illustration, Japanese politicians call their own political factions Mura communities. And they talk of, like this, going back to my Mura, my political group, for discussion. This is not merely one instance, one episode, but it is symbolic that in the midst of the Japanese parliament, members continuously use this phrase, Mura community. In addition, before the nuclear accident, groups of nuclear experts were thought to be insular and were critically called nuclear Mura, nuclear community, in the media. In fact, Regardless of whether the word Mura was used or not, it is telling that Japanese people themselves recognize the daily presence of social group with close mutual assistance. For example, in companies and in their internal structures, sections are sometimes acknowledged as Mura. As uh, friends from alma meters and uh, hobbies, and the school associations like the PTA, Parents Teacher Association, they are almost like Mura community. But no matter how much this close nature and exclusivity is criticized and condemned by the contemporary Japanese themselves, from this sense of security, that is the stability, durability, and the notion that they will be protected the strong group consciousness of the Japanese people are here and will continue. The disaster brought this concept to light. Physical infrastructure that produced a lifestyle collapsed. 
and when the governmental networks ceased to function. The foundation that people leaned on was the Ye household and the Mura community in Tohoku region, where earthquake and tsunami, tsunami took place. While the fact that the Japanese acted in a calm and orderly fashion at the time of the earthquake was apparently viewed with surprise overseas, for Japanese, when the products of modernization temporarily stopped functioning, trust in the human relationship structures, the basis of which was cultivated in the Edo period, became something upon which to rely. That there was no massive confusion or looting did not seem strange to did not seem strange at all to the Japanese. Although visible order seemed to have broken down, the basic techniques of human relationships and their values did not, because the regularity of household community did not disappear. There were two memorable episodes in the cities that I visited in the Tohoku region of earthquake and tsunami. People said to me, there were indeed some people who are trying to take items from a supermarket without permission. However, they have come from far away, that is to say, it was planned crime, which was explained with, this would never happen among acquaintances. Whether true or not, they talked like this. That means they think in this way. In other words, in a community where everyone knows each other, such things do not happen. Such things, I mean, looting, such a thing, looting. This consciousness of insularity on a small scale is not only present in agricultural communities. Because of these face-to-face -face relationships in smaller districts, looting did not occur even in towns of 100,000 people. Rather, Conditions were such that in individual shops, there was no feeling of profiteering in disaster. And people were rather asked to freely take fresh food and perishables because items with a shorter, short shelf life, close expiration dates, and muddy packaging would be a waste since the products were unusable. In another episode, in the mornings of a few days after 3-11, the date of earthquake and tsunami, people came from all parts of the villages and towns to the center or some crossings of the road to be able to talk and pass the day and the, their to be able to talk and pass the day, and their numbers increased by the day. They were not directed to do so by the government or local municipalities, but wanted to check on each other's safety, get information on relief supplies, because gas, water, and electricity have ceased. This exchange of devising ways to overcome their situation continued spontaneously and naturally over the course of months. We can call this a straightforward embodiment of people who to a great extent put their trust and values in the relationships of such basic groups which originated from the pre-existing Mura community in El period. Furthermore, which is of interest is that the secularization of religion does not only mean weakened religious power and in turn pressure from authority, but spontaneity from the public, which leads to a strengthening of political and social cohesion. Rather, I may say, the Japanese people sought, sought to include a new religiousness 
in their social ties. The core element of religiousness is not the here and now, but rather in the assumption of a world of varying dimensions that differs from the real world spatially and temporarily from the eternal past to the future. In English, this is expressed by the word transcendental. In this, in this lecture, I have already stated that the intellectual lineage created by Buddhism in Japan tapered off entirely in the Edo period, and that at that time Japanese religious religions lost their transcendental power. However, this can be said to have been in the religious doctrine of Buddhism and Shintoism. People can imagine a dimension that is not of the here and now, and as a basis for that, they continue to cut out the actual world, the here and now. Japanese people have handled religion differently since the Edo period, namely in communal societies such as the Ie household and the Mura community, one selects transcendental acts. For example, one feels responsible for his ancestors and the descendants of his household and acts in light of his, his responsibilities. Further, by devoting yourself to the Mura, the community that provides continuity between you and your community, you can embrace the transcendence of the here and now. If you compare this notion to worldly concepts of transcendence, such as the idea of an absolute God or the eternal or infinite, this Japanese uh, transcendence is much smaller, shorter, and weaker. In actuality, most modern Japanese people accept that even if one prepares his own grave, in the short time of decades or centuries that follow, there may not be guardians of the tomb, descendants, prayers may not be said. The tomb may even collapse. But as long as one returns to nature, all is well. In this, this context, nature is transcendent existence, like God to Japanese people. Wrapped up in the framework of the limited transcendence of these expressions, in fact, limited transcendence is a conflicting. Transcendence doesn't have any limit. But um, I cannot create, I cannot invent another word. So I, I will say limited transcendence. Or manageable transcendence. There would appear to be a higher level of a concept, such as nature, providence, the sun, and the world, mankind's world. That doesn't clearly lend dogma or theology, but characteristics such as the unconstrained Shinto doctrine and animism seem to have an effect on the notion. Inventions and methods that make people happier in the world. Next, I would like to look at the inventions and the methods, or the ways, that make people happier, which Japan's tolerance of religion and its secularism have produced in Japanese society. The Edo period and the modern Japan period that followed were a time in which religion became weak while various do or way in Japanese gain popularity. I won't discuss here exactly when the do title was actually attached, but in Japan, those systems which aim at the mastery of a certain skill in life, from kado, flower arrangement, shodo, calligraphy, and the Sado tea ceremony, 
to kendo, fighting with sword, and judo, you may know. And even dance and musical groups, usually called schools rather than ways, have the way or school suffix attached. The core of these ways and schools were created before the Edo period as part of Japanese culture, refined during the Edo period, and then further developed through to modern times. Anyone can, part can participate in them. And they also contain the elements of worldly profit, as well as a type of mutual assistance and social harmony. These various ways, or do, have all the appearance of religious sects. All that is different is the absence of transcendence. If we accept that religion has been secularized in Japan, at a secular level, these ways in the various religious sects are almost the same as religion. At a pinnacle stands ahead founder of tea ceremony or flower arrangement or judo. There, were, there are internal ranking systems based on diplomas and accredi accreditations like uh, religious clerical rankings. So in judo there is a um, um, white belt or black belt or blue belt, etc., etc. With uh, massive learning fees, arms donations, swallowed up by the organization. And as I noted earlier, activities are directed at greater profit in this life. In all these senses, the ways could be described as secularized religions. It might even be more accurate to say that the secularization of religion has erased the threshold of transcendence with all the skills and organizations designed to enable happiness in this life, becoming like religions in Japan. Hence, we have even seen the recent emergence of religions that call themselves things like Kofuku no Kagaku, the science of happiness. However, there is one major problem. Many elements which are regarded as a flower of Japanese culture or as Japanese virtues relate to wisdom and ingenuity in the context of daily life and consequ consequently lack a strong ideology. I put this differently. I say that they have no strong words. Accordingly, they can avoid certain types of dispute religious conflicts and ideological struggles. Conversely, their weakness is that they have no consistent story to be provided to outsiders. No consistent ideology in words. However, for close to 400 years, while there have been more some deviations caused by change, the major trend in Japanese society has been to evolve physical skills while simplifying language. Doctrinal ideologies have been abandoned while physical etiquette and ceremonial repetition have been polished. In the absence of religious prohibitions, the body has become something positive that creates joy in this world has created many elements of so-called Japanese culture, from tea ceremony to judo and through to the unprecedented and free physicality seen in animation and manga. There are any number of actual examples. Of course, physical pleasure or physical agreeability, even outside Japan, is a key human concept, concern. However, the difference between other countries and Japan is that there are absolutely no constraints, or more specifically, no constraints coming from religious thought on pursuing physical agreeability in Japan. 
Naturally, if, for example, if you watch a Hollywood movie, you will see endless examples of men and women with incredible bodies doing impossible things, which would seem like an affirmation of pleasing bodies like Japanese. However, if you look closer in Hollywood films, there will inevitably be something about the ephemeral nature of the human body. The temptation to vice presented by the body and the values about the body. For example, the courage of the hero or the love of the partner or patriotism, etc. etc. And the story will definitely arrive at that conclusion that negative aspect of the body. But in Japan, disciplined and refined bodies always bring virtue from beginning to end. I cut the next three, one or two sentences. Along with these thoroughly entrenched secular values, there are weak words and ideology. But the vague transcendental values which lend support from outside the world, combined with a constant here and now, create the sense of perseverance and striving for Japanese people. The feeling that whatever the, whatever the hardship that occurred, it had already happened. And one can only start from that point on. That may seem like resignation, but we can also call it a realistic attitude. Here I have to make a comparison with other countries. For an island nation with limited resources, bottom line conditions of being somewhat poor, but moderately happy and bouncing back from adversity uh, events that have been historically repeated for the Japanese people. There is recognition of a shared need to overcome hardship. I watched with humor while uh, the Japanese became wealthy. They lacked the fundamental knowledge to be rich, leading to the bubble era of the 1980s, sorry, not zero, eight, eight, zero which weakened Japanese people's spirit. However, it can be said that events like defeat in World War II and the hardships on the scale of the disaster toughen the spirit and make one act respectably. Of course, you might say this way of thinking would make, say, insert those in the disaster affected area. However, Japanese today know that there is potential for an earthquake in every region of the country. And I think that victims of the current earthquake, tsunami and nuclear accident, have sympathy for future victims of earthquakes, tsunami and nuclear accidents. I would now like to invite your questions and comments so that we can solve these puzzles together. Thank you very much.
Profesör Gürme Galesi'ni verseydim biz onu çapeli yerdik memnuniyet. Ve e, bir sualım da olacak. Ben e, Japonya medeniyetini uzun iller öğrenmişim ve benim monografiyalarımda o tecrübe eks olunup e, öğrenmişim ki Japon e, inkişafı, Japon kudretinin esasında üç esas şey durur. Güçlü Japon ruhu ve güçlü milliydi bu bir. İkincisi intelektual medeniyetin üstünlüğü ve üçüncüsü milli medeniyetin demokratikleşmesi. I don't think there is uh, any change. Um, you mean this be that all of this be or this be elements are still in the Japanese uh, society? Is that, is that your question? I think the uh, uh, spread and the intellectuality and the democracy are the three pillars. And uh, the last one I may comment, the uh, democracy. We usually think that democracy started in Japan after World War II. But in fact, the different, um, the, the concept of equality, was very old in Japan. Equality is uh, one of the key factors of democracy. But the concept of equality, I think, goes back to even every area in Japan. And uh, in 1868, samurai class lost the power. Then 1945, um, the, the power class or upper class of at that time lost their ground. So within 70 or 80 years, Japan had two big upheavals. So nowadays. We have no class. And where we Japanese go to Western Europe, for example, France or Britain, we are rather amazed that there is very strong remnant of class society. And when the football player, Mr. Beckham, speaks on TV. His English is very much like working class English. There is a very strong clear difference between the upper or upper middle class English and the working class English in pronunciation in vocabulary etc. But there's no such difference among Japanese people in contemporary Japan. And it doesn't mean all democracy. But the concept of equality is very old in Japan. So in other senses, in other sense, democracy isn't really actually yet in Japan. So we are still in process of uh, um, gaining the real democracy. But it's all over the world. Even in USA, the democracy see, doesn't have full um, doesn't have uh, doesn't perfect. zamanda bu tedbirde iştirak eden Japonya'nın Fırgalada sefirimiz salonda İran. Doğrusu bir ülke hadise 
bizim Bakı Dövlət Üniversitesi'nin ilim tarihinde el amedlet bir hadisedir. Ve ben öyle gelip ki, bizim el ağalarımızın inkişafında da büyük rol koruyacaktır. Ben bugün Seher Tokyo'dan gelmişim. Geçen haftanın dördüncü günü Tokyo Üniversitesi'nde oldum. Doğrusu ben Tokyo Üniversitesi'nde antropologiya ilminin bu kadar yüksek seviyede olmasını hiç tesebbülme getirmez. Tesebbülün antropologiya ilmi Japonya'da 1886 yılında yaranıp geçen müddette bu sahilde büyük ilme aktarışlar yaparılır. Hal hazırda Tokyo Üniversitesi'nde hem müzi hem de büyük kitaplama var. Ben e, yani e, Japon alimlerinin gözlükleri işe, farklı ilmi tedgatlara doğrusu heyran oldum. Ve elbette bu öğrenmeli sahalar da çok. Benim bir sualım var. Muhasir globallaşma şeraitinde Japon antropologiyasının özüne mersus hususiyetleri özüne nece bir tabir? Bunu öğrenmek isterdim. Ben e, bilmek isterdim. Bu Japonya antropologiyasının gerb antropologiyasıyla münasibeti neyse olur. Yani sırf onları tekrar edilir veya ödülü müsellim onları vardı. Bak bunu elbette ben için çok maralı bir sahadır. Sonra üçüncü bir sahada üçüncü bir sahada Adeta ki, böyle insan olduk ki, antropologi ve ilimlerinde yaranıp, burada bizim tarihçi talebeler iştirak edildiler. Aristotel onun o bahanesi sahibi. Ama aynı zamanda bize mevcuttur ki, şerikte bir sıra kadim dövülerde, her adam da var, o ceryanlar olur. Aynı zamanda antropologi ve ilmine dahil olur. Yani antropologi ve sahasında büyük nahaliyetler kazanılır. Bak bu mesele de bu mesele. Thank you very much for questions. Um, I rather like to answer uh, from my personal experiences. Um, I was educated as an anthropologist in Japan and also in Great Britain. And uh, because I liked the founders of social anthropology in Great Britain. Um, yes. And I think um, I learned um, the methodology and skills of social anthropology in United Kingdom, in particular in Cambridge University. But I think, uh, as you may uh, signify, as you, you may um, suggest that anthropology of uh, Britain, France, or USA was a kind of uh, science who make research on the rest of them, not on themselves, but on Africa or in South America or in all other world. So there is uh, some framework, us and they. In the concept of us, uh, sorry, in the framework of us and they, them, us means Western Europeans. But I'm not a Western European, I'm an Asian. So the framework of us and they of uh, British anthropology is not compatible with my own personal. But 
But in globalization, now every country is us at the same time there. So there is no center of us. There is no periphery of them. I think the future anthropology is uh, not the science making research on the difference between Western Europe and the rest of the world. Rather, to know and understand each other from one's own perspective and conversely from their perspective. Gelecekte antropologiyanın inkişaf tendensiyası bize var. Daha çok e, Gerbi Avrupa ve başka ülke arasında olan ziyaret, ziyaret araştırma yok. Daha çok istenen ülkenin hem özü hem de başkaları perspektifini araştırmamız lazım. Mahmut Ali Nişat, Fakat Afiyet Şirin, Third Course. You were talking about some specific cultural features of Japanese culture. Kendo, Shado, Judo, additional harakiri. So my question is, uh, Japan had been living under self-isolations for long decades and centuries. Does, uh, is the development of these cultural features and specifics have anything to do with like self-isolation of Japanese people? My question is, thank you. Well, um, for 250 years of isolation, Japanese people make efforts to live within the limited conditions. So they work, at the same time they try to invent methods of making them happy. So even gardening or fishing or flower arrangement tea ceremony or fighting with sword or judo, all those things um, about some intellectual works, um, these methods of uh, making harmony between our body and the surrounding nature is the 200 year efforts of their making them happier in limited condition. So we are now enjoying <laughs> those methods. Uh, I'm Zadu uh, a student of American Studies. First, I would like to thank you for giving us such an amazing lecture. Uh, secondly, my question, you talk about actually about um, tsunami, current earthquakes, uh, or other things, and my question is that we know that after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japanese uh, obtained an immune to recovery. And this immune was rather emotional. Um, and I, I would like to ask you that after the earthquake, it's the same immune, uh, it like, same? same immune. Immunity. Immunity. Immunity. Immunity to, I say, okay. To, to recovery. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I, I'd like to ask, it's the same immunity uh, that Japanese mm. faced uh, after an earthquake? Yes, I think so. Um, there are many interesting episodes. In fact, on the 10th of March, 1945, there was a big air raid in Japan by U.S. Air Force. Um, more people died on at one night in Tokyo on the 10th of uh, March than Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In one night, Nearly a hundred thousand people died by one air raid. 
It was devastating, really. But on the following morning, the street car started to move in the morning without any passenger. So the, the driver or conductor, he went to the station and he fixed up and he started to move the train after the disaster of a hundred thousand deaths. <laughs> um, quite many people noted it in the diary. Um, when the people saw the train moving, that very much encouraged the Tokyo um, city dwellers. That even after that horrible devastating they are right. People can start their life. So one conductor went to the station and two you know, In a sense, not absolutely immune, <laughs> but to a certain extent, Japan people are quite resistant against some disaster or misfortune in, in mass or other group, in a group, in a mass. Konnichiwa. Sarayato omoishimasu. Bago kukuris daikaku no kakushii desu. Toyo gaku wo nihon gakka no kakushii desu. Ninansei desu. So I would like to ask you a question about um, the religion of ha science of happiness, Kofu no Kagaku. What do you mean by that? Like I, I listened to your <laughs> lecture and it was very interesting. The one I got was able to say again. And just like what do you, you mean about that? Like science of happiness? Okay. Uh, science of happiness is one of the new religious sects. Yes. Um, a one Tokyo University graduate, he started. And uh, he gained, I think, uh, half a million followers, etc. And it happens. So I said that um, in Japan, the religions were disappearing. But instead, there are many religious sects. And, but they look like religion. But from my viewpoint, they are not religion in the sense of Christianity or Islam or other religions. They are the what, um, mutual assistance group to hold an organization and uh, to solve, solve the daily problems within that. Um, of course, they have a kind of ideology made of scraps of Christianity, Buddhism, and many other religions. Um, Ideas say that there is no real uh, systematized ideology. But there are group of <laughs> helping each other in uh, this secular life. Sometimes one or two of them go to the extreme of saying that a leader can make a miracle or etc. I myself personally don't believe. But um, I don't mind some followers believing that that their belief 
Anyway, you may be surprised, but I'm Catholic. I'm in the minority group. Catholics are just 0.3% uh, of the Japanese population. And I'm talking of non-religious aspect of Japanese society, but I am myself a Catholic. Uh, it's a, it does sound a bit strange. <laughs> Thank you. In the beginning of the lecture, you were talking about the different religions mm. in Japan. Yes. I would like to ask you how the difference in religious views uh, influence the people, the people's behavior while the earthquake and after this disaster in, a, in Japan. For example, um, what's the difference in their behavior um, while the difference in their religious views or they influence or they behave themselves as a unique nation without any religious views, without the difference in religious views? Um. I don't think there is a difference, in fact. But each organization of Buddhism and the organization of Christianity and the organization of Shinto, um, they worked and started to establish some health group, etc. But there is no difference in terms of religious ideology. I don't think there is any. And because I'm Catholic, I know some activities carried out by um, Catholic priests and followers in that area. They, their activities were not based on the religious ideology, rather more in a broad sense, the Japanese ideology of helping each other within the other. Capability. <laughs> Onlar bu hesal hazırdaki psikoloji bu durumda gelip Azerbaycan'a lazımlı bir mekanda bu muhazirene okudular ve biz çok memnun ettiler ve inandırıp ki sizi ve bu kalbi çok mekin kalktı ve onlar bütün dünyaya numayiş ettiler. Bütün dünya, bütün dünya panikada olan zaman onlar çok mekin döndüler ve bu problemi daha tez çözdüler. Yanıma gelir ki bir neçe ölüler bundan kabak onlara Zenzele baş vermişti ve onlar karşılarına koydular ki biz bu zenzelenin üç ilerisinde o şehri daha da güzel seviyeye çatdıraq ve buna nail oldular. Yapon halkı bizim için kardeş halkı çünkü en çetin durumlarda belə onlar öz kömüğünü bizim halkından esir gelmeyiblər. Onlar daima bizim səhiyyədə, təhsildə, sosyoloji layihələrimizde dəstək veriblər ve mən öz dərimin adlarımı bir daha bildirirəm sizlere. Ve temeli koyulubdur ümumili bizim Seydir Aliyev tarafından. Bu 20 illikdir bizim bir gelen emektaşlığımızın ve dostluğumuzun. Bu dostluğun geleceğini biz gençler devam etmeyi de inandırıram. Arigato. Uh, uh, as for, uh, as for, uh, understood your, uh, on, from your lecture, uh, the terms of history in your country, uh, introduce the uh, really religion, religions and isn't uh, it difficult as the present time uh, confess all the uh, all three religions of uh, uh, the same time. So how can these three, uh, let's say, contradictory in some ways religions can coexist peacefully simultaneously? I see. I see. Um, First of all, Shintoism is not incompatible with any religion. First of all, it has no strong ideology, no strong new doctrines. And so, even the Buddhist, Buddhism and Shintoism, 
once were fused in the history of Japan. So shrine and temple were just stood to next to each other and they combine their ideology. So anyway, Shintoism never, almost, in fact, not, but never fought against other religions. Um, not that, not absolutely true, but. So, the Buddhism and the Christianity do not reconcile with either each other easily. In, at the level of ideology. But at the same time, my mother and father, they are Catholic. But, in fact, we have a Buddhist altar in our house, accepting that the believers, Christians of his church, even the Christianity, or Buddhism, when they came to Japan, they were localized in Japanese society. So that's a reason why three religions are do exist at the same time in one society. Why they were localized is another question that I cannot answer quickly now. Sorry, but that, that's the end of my answer. My name is Lama mm -hmm. I am alumni of Oriental Studies on Japan yeah. here at the Kampakyu State University. Currently doing a Master in International Affairs and Diplomacy at Azerbaijan Diplomatic Academy. So uh, my question is all about um, the major concepts in Japanese society, uh, about Uchi and Soto concepts. Uh, while having been uh, doing my this is uh, in Japan uh, at Kyoto University. I've uh, I have noticed that these these two uh, two concepts yes. uh, are create creates the uh, the fundamental fundamental concept of uh, modern as modern Japan Japan uh, and as ancient Japan. So, uh, for example, Natsume Soseki in the beginning of uh, the 20th century mentioned about that Japan, Japan is going to be uh, more Europeized further. And he, he mentioned his uh, threats that further Europeization will uh, cause in a non-existence of uh, current Japan. So uh, in today's lecture, you've mentioned, uh, you, you indicated that every country is, is us for us and no preference to them. So my question would be about, can I understand this, that there is no Uchi and Soto concepts for uh, contemporary Japanese people? Thank you very much. The household or community is the basis of Uchi Soto concept. But still, um, holding that concept very firmly, we change, perhaps, our ideas about Soto holding the concept of Uchi very firmly, but we perhaps try to extend our imagination to Soto era. Um, I don't think we have succeeded fully in modifying our uh, ideology, but still it is at least in the process and in some parts we, it was successful and uh, we continue to Prior to that, yes. so okay. uh, I was asked to make my answer short. So. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sunima Sofia. I am first year student of law faculty. And uh, so you talked about the secularism of the religion in yes. Japan. And I want to ask you that when the process of secularism of religion in Japan began, were there any resistance by the uh, radical parties that didn't yeah. want it to happen? And how Japanese people overcame it? At the beginning I said that the tolerance for secularization was made by intolerance. So it was um, made to 
political by Tokugawa government by force. So there was uh, resistance from Buddhism and in particular from Christianity. So there was a very big battle and massacre of Japanese Christians in the early 16th and 17th century. Um, but anyway, that resistance was completely suppressed. But in fact, there, there is uh, a very small number of Christians uh, survived. But in, in general, it was. So the secularization of religion was not started by people in terms voluntarily. It was rather done by the um, power, by the what, political power, by the government. Um, so, but still, after two or three hundred years time, I think Japanese people swallowed and embraced that condition and make it transform. Yes. Well, each question is very difficult <laughs> to answer <laughs> in short words. I would like to ask you to tell me the best and the worst features of the Japan Japanese nation mm -hmm. uh, of your point of view. I see. You may find some good aspect of our nation. So uh, I, I, I let you find good aspect, but I rather point out bad aspects of the Japanese nation. It's, I think that's uh, come from the limit of uh, um, our ideology of the transcendence. Because sometimes the Japanese imagination of us doesn't go beyond one's own community or one's own nation. Of course, Japanese people can behave internationally and Japanese as a nation is an international nation. But still, um, basically, sometimes or in some parts, Japan lacks kind of universality. So that the I think fundamental weak point of Japanese nation. But please do not misunderstand that uh, Japanese, Japanese uh, Japan as a nation always seeks um, to extend our what concept of us or we to the other people. But perhaps because of a historical experience, sometimes at surface there is no um, defect. But at the bottom, sometimes um, we lack in the true understanding of otherness. But it is quite difficult, but um, I may say so. I don't think other Japanese people will say the same thing, but that's my first answer. Uh, Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> Professor Malavikia, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai, Malavai,
intersections of uh, civilizations and between the East and the West and uh, so I found there seem to be many elements cultural elements in this area not just Islam but uh, other religions and uh, many um, kingdoms and uh, many elements of uh, cultures that my impression <laughs> <laughs> 